This episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. Sorry, my excited, mind was excited. wandering. I'm in a Christmas spirit. That's what it is. It was like, mm, Christmas trees. And some Grinch is going to be like, and cookies. Some Grinch. Cookies. Oh, man, Christmas cookies. Those have not shown up yet. That's, I'm, that is a huge weakness of mine. If the kids Do make those sugar up, cookies. They show up? Do you like subscribe to some sort of stork delivery service where they bring you Christmas cookies? Uh, <laughs> anyway, welcome to Crowd Surfing, everybody. Hey, we want to do a shout out to some of our Kickstarter backers. So first we are saying thank you to George, Rebecca, James, and Ella Wright from Sydney, Australia. Nice. Ooh, thank you. Aldoberto Rodriguez, who said he selected this pledge just to hear Tom and Sam struggle to say my name. But he thinks Z would do it. Did I say Come it right? Oh man, do it. Right. Alberto. Alberto. All right. Also, Dice Rose in Costa Rica. And then, <laughs> uh, Tarje Olsen. Thank you guys. We appreciate you backing our Kickstarter. And we hope you enjoy the show today because we're talking cool. all about Kickstarters. Let's so it. let's get started with projects from this week. Yeah. All righty. Well, we're going to, I'm trying something new this time. I'm going to start from the lowest funded project going to the highest. Okay. Lowest so far. Got it. Yeah, well, Is that me, what you mean? I was sorting tabs. Yes. Okay. At the moment of me doing this. So it's possible that one has changed. <sighs> Mike yeah, Slayball, you need to keep your mouth shut. We have to start all over again then. Um, what the what? Why are you picking you a fight with our keep, viewers? Keep, keep, be, okay. quiet. <laughs> be quiet, man. Why do okay. you want to say stuff? <laughs> Anywho, um, so we're taking a look at these. These are Kickstarters that are ending in the next 21 days. Normally we do 14 days, but we will not be doing this the day before Thanksgiving. 21 days? I know, there's a lot. Oh my, it's right. like a Christmas goose. <laughs> so let's start with Galilean Moons, a board game of galactic mining. What does that make you think of when you first look at the cover there? Galilean Moons, uh, monsters, it and moonshine. It makes moonshine. me think of moonlighting, that old TV show. Oh, with, I was thinking uh, Iron Giant. The character okay, looks like Iron Giant. Sure, the font, Cyan the font Gen looks like moonshine smuggling. That's what that font makes me think of. Oh, I actually am interested in this one. I think this one it looks looks, cool. looks nice. I'm yeah, it looks all right. I was I'm telling Sam this is a over. Uh, usually, I I have about one third, I would say, of the projects that I think look pretty good, and I I could see myself digging in deeper. Did he tell you how many times he actually like, purged this list? No, he didn't, but this these look pretty good overall. Fifteen oh. times. Fifteen? Yes. He purged this list fifteen times. Why are you murdering people one one day a year? What are we talking about? Purging. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, I exactly. actually because it's twenty one days, I had to cut a lot of projects got out. It, got it, okay. Um so sorry. We just picked ones that look interesting to Galilean us. Galilean Moons looks really good to me. Yeah, this is neat. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty pumped. It's weird. This is the lowest funded one on this list, but I think it's just because it's smaller and people want the big Bling and what is that? <laughs> I love it. I want to watch it again. <laughs> oh, you should back it just because of that. All right, that's great. <laughs> I can watch it all day. All right, yeah, let's move to the next one. <laughs> all righty. Um, Seven Bridges, a straw and right board game. <laughs> I get it. I, I don't want to back it just because of the name. Because they called it a straw and right? It's like, come on. Hey, man, you know, it's okay. I don't have a problem with that. The dice in this look a little on the cheap plain side. Yes. The game looks pretty cool. I like that board, <laughs> the, the you know sheet of paper. Uh, are those like proto dice, or is that no, the way they are? I, no, I think I think they're supposed to represent what you can draw onto your map as you're strolling through the town of Konigsberg. Yeah. Um, you can draw an intersection, or you can draw three a, a length that's uh, a straight line that's three blocks long, yeah. or a corner, or that's what it that's what it's doing. They just you're right. They look a little prototypey, but I like the map. I, I think that's a neat looking game. It makes me think of. Uh, uh, another kind of roll and write, flip and write, whatever game called uh, Let's Build a Bus Route, Let's Make a Bus Route, whatever that game's called. 
kind of looks like this. That one's got a yeah. dry erase board, mm -hmm. which I like better. It's a little bigger. It's like a bigger footprint than this. But this so looks neat. They can neat. hear a conversation going on in the background. Huh, I wonder why. All right. So, anywho, um, this is a little bit weird to me, this <laughs> comparison of the box and sheet size to other popular roll and write games. I don't get that, really. Well, they know their target audience, man. Nobody's stumbling I on guess, this so it's not a gamer. Sure, I don't know. How many of these games do you know that silly. they're comparing it to? All of them. Yeah, so do like, I bet 80% of the people who are looking at this. True. Right. These guys know who they're marketing to. Woof. And that is another vote of confidence from me, because they know exactly who they're making this game for. Is this your pick of the week? No. No. <laughs> All right. Zestria, a marriage negotiation board game. This is his pick. Huh? Well, I was, oh, I've wondered what this... This is apparently... I had a Romanian hard time. traditions. Yeah, I had a hard time figuring this out. This game, <laughs> this game to me looks like somebody was drinking a bottle of Pepto Bismol and somebody made them laugh. And they because of the it colors, all over the table. I don't yeah, mind the colors. The look, oh. yeah, it's got look that too. classic. I don't know the That's not country. Classic. I guess it's that country, but it's that that feels to me very traditional. I like the look of it. Sure, yeah. this is yeah, one I don't know. The marriage negotiations. I don't know anything about Romanian marriage traditions, so I wouldn't know like. I, when I'm playing this game, am I making fun of it? Am I? You know, is game, it serious? I was on board for the look and kind of what was going on. I kept on going farther down or further down, excuse me, and uh, and they eventually I got to some cards that just look like action cards. I think it's more in a take that vein than I expected. Some Bar of the later fight. cards. Drinking is not good for you. Minus one lad husband. Yeah, like this kind of stuff, like take one, steal one from somebody yeah, else. These true. things, all these things, they sound like take that cards. I don't know if that's the kind of game it is, but... Here's the thing, though. I feel like it's different than a lot of other games. We're about Agreed. To, <laughs> to see on the list. Is this your pick of the week, Tom? It is not. But you, you're digging on it. Sam's a hater this week, man. <laughs> you're normally the hater. What are you talking about? Oh, can I say? I'm liking this stuff. All righty. Montana Gold Rush and Longhorns. Longhorns <laughs> is definitely out because oh, I have a copy. Um, but the one I have is from White from, Goblin. Well, right. From the other company. This is makes. from uh, Big Kid Games, right? This, <laughs> is, this yeah. is an all-in-one package, I think. It's not just for one expansion. It's the uh, Heritage Edition. I think you can get just the expansion, right? Uh, yeah, you can for 25 bucks. Yeah, the Heritage get, Edition is out. That's available. And then two expansions. And you, you can, can get can. one expansion for 25 two for 46 a savings of $4. Or 59 That's assuming that the other expansion is also $25. Faulty math. Ooh. Then 59 if you want the... Ooh, I didn't realize those put together makes a, a thing. That's cool. 59 for the game. Yeah. And then 129 for everything. For everything. Pretty well, you cool. like Montana. I do, yeah. It's a neat game. It's what I have not played. I would like and to I, try I, it at I've some point. I've heard the expansions add a solid amount to it. My one main complaint when I reviewed the game, however long ago that was, was that it was kind of a little repetitive, a little simplistic. If the expansions are going to add a little oomph, a little more going on for you to do, then, then thumbs up from me. Huh. So, yeah, I'm excited to try these out. Hey, robot. Oh, is this from Oink Games? <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's from Oink. I mean, the box design, the, I mean, everything. Uh, I don't think it's deliberately meant to be that way. It's I don't think so either. It just sort of looks that way. And then there's a picture a little farther down, further down, I did it again, that um, looks like it's code names. Look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but this baby. game, you're working with your smart speaker. So that's kind of interesting. Sam is, was hating on this. Really? I hate this concept. What? Yeah, baby, you on. have to have Alexa or Google Home in yeah. order to play this game. Who doesn't? Well, here's you my, have to. Here's my, my counter to that. Who is, does? My okay. counter to that is the that, number is lower. My counter to that is I think that this is probably slightly ahead, but I think within 10 years almost everybody will have one. Yeah. Now wow. I'm telling you, I'm on. I'm wow. on board. I'm How do on you board. Summon Alexa. Hey, I know Alexa. it's okay, Google, and it's hey, no. You just say hey. Alexa. And you just say Alexa, whatever. That's it? Yeah. There's no like trigger word before Alexa? No. You cannot own her if somebody in your family is called Alex. Or, you know, <laughs> I don't Alexa. know how Alex works or not. I have, to, I have some friends that named Alex. If you're one of those people who, before you talk, you do, uh, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> Alex, uh, yes. Um, ah! 
<laughs> I'm really on board the Alexa. I, I just got one a few weeks I ago. Know, and you're I know. Each day it. I'm finding more and more things. And I, This is your pick of the week. No, it's not. I think it's neat, though. It's a neat concept, honestly. You're, you're asking a smart device or whatever, one of those smart speakers, a question to try to get it to say in its response the word. It's kind of neat. It reminds me of the Wikipedia game I play sometimes where you go online and you try to get to a certain entry by clicking entries in, in one article, so you click a keyword, and you're trying to get be the first one to get to another word. In the fewest clicks or the fastest like, or whatever? Like uh, the Avengers movie, and you got to get to Bulgaria. So I'll click on, oh, this actor, oh, Bulgaria's not there, but they're married to this person. And you're just trying to find a way to get there. It's that sure, same concept. Sure, that's neat. I like that. All right. Anna Urbis, the fight for re Rome relaunch. They put that because I think you're not allowed to <laughs> name things exactly the same anymore. Okay. This one looks okay. It's this, Rome. A lot of people like this sort of thing. This one looks, I, I found it very difficult to read on this one. And uh, I, the font they used. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Just, it was a horribly designed page. Fonts I do like that small. little, I'm hoping that's like a little <laughs> arena board on the side there. That's that what it cool. is. And then they, they further down, they say that you can actually, they, it comes with, uh, like walls or something like that, you can stack that on top of the main board instead of having it off to the side. I don't know if it's on one of the different versions. I was on board with this as well until I reached this part, the standard edition. Keep scrolling. Uh, Z's going to love this. Oh, look at all those minis. That's cool. And you're going to have those minis standing next to those. <laughs> well, so is it what I saw? So this is what Carcassonne has invaded the Roman Empire. No, is I saw miniatures up there. You probably can upgrade it to get <sighs> nice. all miniatures. Yeah, I, mean, I like it. No, I just you don't like meeples and miniatures. No, you're a what's a that purist. segregationist? He's a purist. <laughs> Wooden bits or plastic bits? You hate don't. this too, don't don't. I don't, don't like you know, this. Yeah, but it's not, it's not because of the meeples or the or the pieces. No, I just don't like the look aspect. of it. No, the, yeah. the game was not. Yeah, I'm not that aspect it. though, you you don't like having. Two different kinds of components. That's true. I don't. I, I tolerate it in side, mm -hmm. but that's about it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. We do tolerate it in side, but that's because they're two very different things. It's like little dudes, and then your mechs. And they kind of serve a purpose. I mean, the the rule book says plastic bits can fight, wooden bits cannot. Right. You're like, okay, I'll buy into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Clash of Minds, Holmes versus Moriarty. I've never oh. seen this theme before. <laughs> yeah, I know. Although that is a cool cover. It is I a do cool like cover, that yeah. glass breaking and it's stuff. It's like a movie poster. Yeah, it's neat and it's, TV show poster. I mean, that's that's that. some very weathered Holmes and Moriarty there, though. He's they've, seen some they've, stuff. <laughs> they've been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Holmes, I just came out of a fight. <laughs> just he's recovering. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this, looks looks this looks pretty. The neat. problem with this one is it's hard to, for me to start differentiating between all these two-player Sherlock Holmes games. Yes. Now, has this company done anything else? It's uh, Creative Maker LLC, which is a really... It's a shell company. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at me like I just said laundering money. Alakazoo, uh -huh. The Valley of the Alchemist, Galaxy of Trian. Oh, I played that one. That's it. Yeah, right. I don't know any of these. You've played some of these or no, one of the these? No, just the bottom one. I don't know. The game looks neat. It's got some cool-looking components. So, sure, tentative thumbs up there. Mm -hmm. The shores of Tripoli. All I know about this is that you get there from the halls of Montezuma. No, you. Oh my goodness! There's two different places. From the halls of Montezuma, which is in South America, uh -huh. the shores of Tripoli, which is in. That was a joke, son. Okay. I know that oh it's my in the goodness. same. Oh, we just said <laughs> son. <laughs> that was a joke, son. <laughs> No, it's in the Ooh. it's in the marine side. Yes, it Rumble is. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Oh snap! All right then. All right, it's a, a so war game. So how did you get there? <laughs> this is Sam's pick of the week. No, it's it not. Is. But I I am very interested in this game. Just well, I'm interested because Jason Matthews said, "Get it." It's a largely well, I did I do put a lot of stock in that because I do like you know his games that are mentioned there, 1960, Founding Fathers, and Twilight Struggle. But um, this is a largely overlooked period of our history so i like it just for that alone oh the barbary pirates yeah, yeah. i like that a lot so yeah I'm, I'm 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 overlooking this one okay <laughs> strike the game of worker rebellion as opposed to the last time i seen a game called strike oh. which is the rolling the dice one I thought this was a bowling game <laughs> yeah. strike so 
That's kind of what Kickstarter is, right? Bowling for dollars? This is from the Kickstarter. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. This Maybe. is from the Tisa Collective. Oh, no, split. Uh, what have they done before? <laughs> Fight fascism, Space Cats rise up and cooperate. I feel he's, like there's a theme here. These don't look so good. Now, this is actually it looks very different from the rest of them. Yeah, this one looks fine. This one looks all right. It, you know. That board has me interested. You know that board reminds me of that game Travis Chance designed with the gun, the giant gun. Uh, hmm? Infamy, yes. Infamy. Uh, yeah, this is... This looks, I mean, I'm not, like, super pumped about this, nah. but it looks interesting enough. Nah, it's all right. All right. Capone, the business of prohibition, which comes with a piggy bank. Well, it looks like a piggy bank, and well, it matter. holds bottles, I think. Yeah, yeah across the top, and then you throw extra bottles in it. Mm -hmm. It looks neat. It's got a cool look, and the animations are nice. There's a lot of 3D little buildings and stuff. Yeah, do you have to build that but every time? I don't know, but I think it's like a constant negotiation game. I think is what they said. I love the way the bottles look in those you trucks. You like this kind of stuff? I so. do. I don't know what it is about prohibition. I like <laughs> the whole yes. the whole concept. You deny yourself that sauce is why. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm for the guys chasing it down. Oh, got it. Yeah. I okay. just like that truck with the bottles in it. That That's makes cool. me happy. That's, That's a cool. That's a device for sure. Yeah. But. It's one that I'm hoping is really cool. That, this yeah. is, the this illustrations looks cool. are neat. It looks neat. Yeah. And look, the truck drives around and throws bottles out the back. I don't think it <laughs> actually it does. Because it spins that. out. Look at this. <laughs> 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 All right. The Zorro Dice Game. Yeah. I would not have expected this one to be funded just from the base of the top. Yeah. I almost skipped it because it looks, that art there looks cheap. Really? No, it no. looks all right to I me. I don't think so. It's stylized. Also, he does like small Z's. He just ripped that guy's shirt. To, <laughs> no, that guy's shirt's not that. staying together. So the Zorro <laughs> No, it's like a small Z, not, he's, he used a a bat to do that Z. No, it's just the blade is a little, uh, he needs to sharpen it. It's a little dull. Yeah, it's a little dull. Normally, he can just and do a, a very sli sliver of a cut. Yeah, he kind of ripped that dude's shirt. All right, this is from Pull the Pen, which is a reworking of overworld games. They're the folks who did Good Cop versus Bad Cop. And they have that box, which I do not like, unfortunately. You open it all It looks weird, cool on yes. the shelf, but on, the, on my shelf, it's not as neat. However, these guys do good games. However, so far, their games have all been very similar. That's true. Like, That's true. Good cop, bad cop-ish to some degree. Or figure right, out who the bad guys are. This looks neat to me. I like the theme. I do like Zorro. Yeah. Um, they, are, they even highlight the box, which is weird to me. They well, they want to highlight proud, their, proud pull of their, the pen. New, their new thing. Yeah. So, But I like the look of the game. And I, you know, again, yes, I'm assuming it's like social deductions, what they do, but it looks neat. It looks neat. All right, on the Origins of Species board game, this is one of two evolution theme games this mm -hmm. week. Yep. Um, this one is the more serious of the two, like super serious. This one looks like it is, oh, never mind. It's, no, it's Artana. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like an Artana game, and yeah. that's how it was. Although now, I wonder if this game has the Genius Games influence into it. Because Genius Games bought Artana. Mm. I don't know, but I don't think so. This might be before all this that. This might shit. be the, yeah. yeah. I read about this a little bit more because the cover intrigued me when we were putting together coverage for Essen. Was this there? I don't know. This was a game that I thought was supposed to be there, but I don't remember I seeing it. I think maybe it. that was it, and it never made it. I'm not sure if it was there or not, but I dug into this oh, a little more. Pull back again. And it just seemed a little samey. Like, the turns seemed very repetitive. The game looks bigger than the way it read Only from the roof. Only 45 bucks so. for two copies of the game. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I... That's I, really cheap. So they do $25, but if you want two copies, $45. I guess if you have a friend and you one of you wants to save five bucks. Sure. Yeah. Obviously not that popular. A thousand yeah. people got one. 59 got two. Well, yeah. Well, it's a special circumstance type of thing. I like the artwork on this. It has that. Um, it looks realistic, scholar. journaly, scholarly looking yeah. feel to it, and I like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I do. I do like that. That motif is really cool. Does it say who the designer of this one was? It probably says it on the box, right? I can't see. It's so small. I forget who it was. Like I said, I read more about this. I don't recall. It might have been a couple of new people. What people are saying. 
what are people saying? I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't put that on my. Guys, I wouldn't put that quote. on my thing. I thought it was bad, but it's it's well, good. I, did, wait, I didn't designers. hate it. Oh, the designers. Uh, they have doctorates in mathematics and work in finances. I don't recognize those names at all. All right. Yeah. Tungari, a Euro game designed by Lewis and Stefan Maltz. Well, this one, you don't have to wonder who designed it. It mentions it right in the title. Tungaro. This one looks cool. This one looks like a tasty minstrel game, but it's Alley Cat. And Alley Cat has, I, I don't love everything that they've done, but they do some pretty solid stuff. They get a nod. Well, they do stuff with dice usually, and I, like, once again, I see dice being placed on the board. Yeah, makes me yeah, happy. The cover to me, if you go back up to the cover, what the cover actually makes me think of is... Uh, for anybody who knows what this is, a Wind Rider game. While well, Wind Rider was alive for like two months. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It looks like the reprints of all, all the reprints Wind Rider did of the classic Canizia games. Okay, maybe. You know what I mean? What I mean? Like the figures, very classic look, that very sharp sure. illustration. But the game looks pretty good. I think good. they're also going for the uh, Disney cartoon there too. Oh, uh, Moana? Moana? Moana, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what Maybe. can I say? You're welcome. Nothing? That's usually you. Keep I know. Stupid pun. <laughs> Still haven't seen the movie. <laughs> say what? I know. Alrighty. I haven't seen it either. I just know that song. <laughs> Honey Buzz. This game's pretty hot for being about... Uh, a topic that we're seeing a lot of at this point. There the honeybees. I don't know is, what happened. Yeah, Someone this, got stung. This is a little like, bit. I will. I think this is a little bit more involved. Um, oh than sure, some of sure. The other ones that are coming out. And this I one like, actually looks really, really uh, interesting. Elf Creek Games. They've done. Um, uh, well, they did the Atlantis Rising. The Atlantis Rising, edition. correct? Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, the no, components no. in this, I'm sure, are going to be awesome, especially for like the fancy. Well, fancy I love edition. that cover. Yeah, the cover I looks really very like that nice. Cover. Uh, they announced some stuff here that, uh, you know, resin pieces and stuff that are meant to look like honey that I'm sure are going to be fantastic. I like fantastic. the quote, the bees have discovered economics. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> this looks neat. There was one weird thing about it. The game looks like a solid strategy game. And then there is a part of the game that is memory-based. Really? I didn't yeah. catch that. Yeah, there's a whole chunk of it where you look for oh, honey. Oh, that's why That is like honey, that is a memory based. It. And then they make a big deal about, wait, wait, wait. We also have a version that is non memory. Well, they, they actually made the thing, don't let the deduction part of it scare you off yeah. because we've got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Now I remember reading that. It did yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. come out of left field, that aspect of it being a memory based. Memory doesn't run but a game for me. You can play without it. So yeah. there is that. Uh, I think it probably, hopefully, adds a little you know simplicity and sort of silliness to the whole thing a little levity to the whole thing because it seems like a fairly involved uh, game yeah family plus you know once again i think the box art looks better than the sleeve i Easily. think the sleeve if i'm not mistaken might be transparent on the front uh okay if that's the case i'm back in a little bit I think it's a border. Right, yeah. And it's the a, front is it's transparent. A border yeah, but I don't know why I would want to put a border on that beautiful cover. I think sleeves are usually just to hold a package sealed. Sure, okay. Vengeance, director's cut. Now, the only one of us who has played Vengeance is Z Garcia. I've pseudo-played it. I've oh, messed with it. Oh, my. There's a lot of blood it's in this a picture. It's a game that is... It's like a heavy it's game. It's not blood. It's a game that's got a lot going on, <laughs> but it's also got a lot of luck with dice. But it's also got a ton of phases, like drafting, rolling, attacking. It's also got a bunch of miniatures, but the miniatures don't do anything at all except stand in the room and be a token, and then you remove them from the room. Mm -hmm. It's a weird game. Hmm. But they're taking another stab at it, and I'm sure it's neat. You know, the game looks really good. There's no denying that. Yeah, I don't know that I like the new expansion cover. Um, I love the the original cover. I love that guy running with a yeah. stick at the whole crowd of people. It's, right, just, it, right. it's a very evocative cover. It's supposed to be basically a revenge movie in a box. And the, the, the setup is even like, oh, the, uh, the initial act that you seek revenge for, and then act one, act two. Mm. You know, it's very, it is evocative, like you said. We still haven't got anyone's pick of the week. What's this all about? Legacies. We all the same game. Here we go. Sam's pick <laughs> Almost guaranteed of that. the week. That is not the case. Oh, you're one of the most well-known names of the early 19th century. True, you want to build true. a legacy. I do. I like the way the board looks a lot. 
Yeah, but is this is a legacy game. The artwork, <laughs> it is, technically. Is no, I like the. I really like the concept accurately. of this. Here's what I don't like about it: that 90 to 180. Why? That's a big time chunk. It's two hours, you wuss. Uh, it's three. That's hours. three hours, you wuss. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. Uh, I did, because it's companies true. usually lie about <laughs> companies usually lie about these times. So if they're so saying saying 90 to 180, I feel like it's a four-hour game. Yeah, that's probably that's probably my concern. Is. That is likely no, true. Not, I know it's I know it's really weird, but some of the artwork just threw me off on this one. Um, I don't like like I don't like the way that lady is drawn. I don't like the way the other dude. Up, I like up the way the house is drawn. is drawn, though. Cards look neat. Yeah. Sure, I guess, but I, it just looked boring to me. I guess. No, I get that. But this is a theme I don't mind. I mean, it's like another Pride and Prejudice type that, theme, that I think. That dude that has the long hair and the beard just looked weird to me. And it's not, I have nothing against long hair or beards. It's just he was drawn weird. The guy that's over there behind Rado's logo, up higher you can see a more clear picture of him. It just looks Yeah, you're right. He does look like a creeper in the background. All right. Yeah, the whole thing to me, I just when I look at this game, I go, this could be neat. I'll never get this to the table. Sure. Who am I going to get to sit down at the table and play this oh, with? Oh, no, 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 no. I know four guys. I know four guys on Tuesday you will find who will play this with you. with you all night long. All, all night long. <laughs> all night. All right. I can't pronounce this. What is it? Uh, Zeriwia. <laughs> Say that again? Zeriwia. <laughs> All right. All right. I, 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 I it's did probably not see something this. like did Zuria or something like that. It's probably something like Oh, no, like I saw Zuria. this. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's from a Polish company, so it's probably it's their not first pronounced the way game. it looks. It's probably pronounced Darwin or something completely different. <laughs> Highly, um, what's, what do you call that? Uh, Highly prototype? What? No, the, the miniatures have been uh, oh, 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 yeah, highly yeah, yeah. washed. Inked. <laughs> They've washed, really yeah, been yeah. washed. Those guys have been washed, washed. And that They're guy has clean. more muscles than he has. <laughs> uh, yeah, his muscles. This uh, one, I'm. This is one of those ones muscles. that I hope it's good, but I'm super nervous about these. It's a new company. It's miniatures. It's yes. artwork. There's a gazillion things in the package. Yeah. It could be good. Oh, that right there, right there is what gave me pause. Forty minutes per player. Forty minutes per player. Um, this is sending up a ton of red flags for me. Although I will say this, a lot of games that are coming out of Poland. From these smaller pump companies, after I play them, I've liked them. Oh, sure, no, no, sure. sure. But so, there's so many, and there's also right. a lot of failures. Yeah. It's yeah, you're right. I get it. Is there a co I know it's cooperative, but is there also a competitive mode that they unlocked? Because then I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Darwin's Choice. This is the second um, Darwinian game. Yeah, this is. Um, this one, I like the silliness of it. I like the idea of the whole. Make your own animal. Right. That, that was a turnoff for me. This I like looks silly. This looks well, silly. we actually have the original version of this <coughs> here in the studio. Yeah. Right. And when I first saw this, I saw that UK Games Expo. I saw some people playing it. I was like, oh, it looks great. I like the idea of putting cards down to make animals. Sure. Mm -hmm. I heard it was a little longer than it needed to be. Well, you just pick a shorter animal. I liked the more academic look of the other one better. Mm -hmm. Like some pick sort of a shorter one. animal. Body. I really like the artwork on this one, though. I, it, I like the cleanness. And you like the silliness, though, combining parts of different animals to make one thing. I do. I don't know I what don't, it is. I don't I care I liked for it ever it. since I was a kid. I designed a game based on this. So You did? Well, way back when. I'm not saying it was good. Time to publish it, son. Yeah, okay. Time to hit it up it on Kickstarter. It's called Professor Bodybuilder. Cause Done. Because he, he built Coming to bodies. Kickstarter soon, folks. <laughs> Stay tuned for more information on... Professor Bodybuilder from Tom Vassell and Z Garcia. Oh, I'm sliding in there. So Hour of Need is one we'll know a whole lot more about in two days because yes. it's being played live <coughs> here on this very channel. Cool, so cool. this is from the Sadler Brothers. I this am is looking their, forward to playing this game. They've done one on street fighting. They've done one on 80, 90s cop movies or 80s, 90s cop movies. Yeah. And now they're doing one on superheroes. So Suits. this is a tough gig, right, to make a superhero game that's not based on... IP properties when you have all that Marvel sure. DC stuff out there. Yeah. I do like those dice though. That looks cool. Yeah, this one. Um, and it looks like proper comic books. Like, I mean, some of the illustrations I saw for this, if you showed them to me out of context, never told me this is a board, board game, game illustration, they'd be like, comic book, yeah. that's a comic. Yeah. I, it's made up for this, but it, they look legit. They clearly got comic book artists. I don't know who's doing the illustrations. But those people. Oh, hey, who do I want to be here? It feels like they they. Majesty, that's probably the superhero, super, superhuman uh, micro guy. 
I guess he can get small. He actually he, he comes outside of the chest of the, Ooh, I like the gorilla. robot. That I saw was some good. images that had the Mac, yeah. and he comes out of the chest. He's like a little guy. He controls oh, I like this guy's name. Thing. Curtains. When he shows up, he's like, it's me <laughs> for you. It's time to draw you in. If Curtains is a good guy, that's who I want to be. Don't throw that shade. Oh, Judge, way. Judge and, and Jerry Zoom. better work together. Punchline looks like a villain. Punchline is basically uh, the comedian. The term uh, is anti-hero, sir. All right, I want to be, I want to be Curtains. I like Curtains the best. Also, he has a cape, and we all know capes are cool. Oh, I wonder who Judge is supposed to be. Not jury. All right, Titan. Strip Mine Titan in this exciting Euro game featuring a fabulous 3D board. This is a the second time this one has uh, been kickstarted. The first one I thought was doing okay, but I guess the, some, there was something that they needed to redo the whole project. Um, the 3D board looks awesome. It looks amazing. I'm pumped yeah, about this one. It's two foot as well. Two foot in diameter. I'm less excited now. Two feet? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, that's not big. In like, diameter. That is yeah. not two feet, man. That's that is really like, big. It's Jeez. almost, yeah. Oh, foot's here, ruler. Yeah, so double it. Yes, I know that. Thanks. Wait, so what's the <laughs> radius of this thing? <laughs> All right. Is it two foot? Know. A foot. I don't care. Forget it. I like how this looks. I'm just hoping it's Ooh, not. Ooh, can you eat those? <laughs> I saw some pie yeah, action. Pie on the brain. Hey, I'm hungry. We've run out of pie. This cake's not pie. This uh, Kickstarter page, <laughs> I will say this, the game looks great. This is one of the best Kickstarter pages I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's good. Like these illustrations that show animation, the, the little squares, not only are they showing you animation of how everything works, but they have that static look over them mm -hmm. to have it restart. The whole thing is really well laid out. Mm -hmm. This is a Really, I mean, really well put together page. Kudos to them. Yep, yep. yep. I'm looking forward to playing this one for sure. This was definitely on my short list. It was almost my pick of the week. Really? Is anybody's? No. Only two. Surprised? No, it's not my. Not I my, thought it not might be yours. Not my pick, but um, I, I really like that board. It I really like the pieces. Great. I like the idea of the game. It's, yeah, it looks yeah. cool. I love the sci-fi theme. It looks great. <laughs> this is Z's pick of. The <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. 18, 18 Six something. <clears throat> 1861 Russia and 1867 Canada. Um, they're going to run out of date soon. When there's 118 XX games, they're like, we're done. That's it. 100 is. And then they'll come up with 1900. A new dawn. <laughs> the trains now have wings. <laughs> Ultimate history. Uh, again, this is cool. I'm glad. I think this is the future of these kind of games, is Kickstarter. Sure. Find uh, the niche audience, and obviously there's one out there who likes these games. And I'm glad. I'm hoping yep. that the – I still want to see the – oh, and Ambie did a live play of this on our channel. She did. Um, I'm hoping that the Cran Rail games find the same kind of home yep. on, on here. And I, and I would imagine they will at some point. Yeah, that's still great. still think those boards could look a little better, but eh, what do I know? Can. we got 218XX games out there in the lobby if you want to play them. Well, we got five games left, and none of us has done our pick of the week. There's, do you think there's a crossover before you do it? What, with me? No. But I don't, maybe you two. I don't know. Our I'm case. I'm sure you're, you're not. A cooperative story-driven campaign game. Steampunk in ancient Egypt. Wait, no. what? This is my pick of the week. Uh, Steampunk, ancient Egypt, Antoine Boza. Yeah. Three other dudes whose games I really like also, at least two of them. I don't know who the, the fourth guy is. I'm sorry, the, the second name there. Le, uh, Le Brat. I thought this would be uh, your pick because of the this Donkama. This looks... It's awesome. It, if you had not included another Kickstarter in the ones that are remaining, this would have been my pick of the week. Oh. This looks so good. I kept scrolling. I kept finding things to like. The I minis went, look awesome. The artwork looks amazing. Look at all this stuff. Did you go by and check out the, the booth at Essen? No. Oh, man. Look, all the stuff. These look amazing. Then later yes. on, you get to little individually packaged boxes. There's an embalmer for crying out loud. <laughs> What else do you need, you filthy animals? <laughs> <laughs> a Look at sandworm! That. Yeah, baby, let that spice flow. That's right. Wait a minute, I did see this there because I remember these rooms. You with pooped this, yourself with the, when you saw it. I, I did not. Yes. Yeah, that was definitely something in the air. Now this is a really, this is a really cool game, and if, yeah, this was Look at on that. the that brink is, of being my pick of the this week. This looks good, man. I might back this. And I rarely back things. I have backed two things, and I got a I got a <laughs> refund on one of them. So <laughs> that is not true. It's not true. I'm kidding. 
but it's very few things I do back. So this looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this a lot. I didn't realize I, I missed looks, the Bowser it thing. It looks very, very good. It looks very, very good. Cool. All right, fellas, I got I mine out of the way. I said I I'm not talking for the rest it. of this. I didn't get to play. Right, I wanted this, to. This is Sam's face. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim Miniatures. Nope. I wouldn't have even put this one on, but it's making so much money. Uh, Scott Pilgrim just has its thing. Renegade already did the Scott Pilgrim deck building game, which is one of the worst deck building games ever made. Wow. Um, Rude. Much. Want me to lie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really not a good game. Um, just say that instead. I don't know, though. Scott Pilgrim, I, okay, so I watched the movie. And because yeah. I played that deck building game, I went and read like six comics until I just had to be like, this is just not for me. I don't, I don't, it's just not for me, this comic. Hmm. What do you not like about it? First of all, it flits from reality to non reality. Like people beat each other up, and then in the next moment, there's romance. It's, it's hard. It's just like the movie, honestly, that, you know, in the movie, he was, I don't know if you saw the movie. I have seen the movie. He like gets challenged by people, and all of a sudden they're like in a video game fight. Yes, yes. The, the the comic's even a little bit more convoluted than that. I'm just, it's just very odd. I have only seen the movie, though, I think so I like I the movie better than the comics. All right. However, here's all the different people. And also, almost everyone in the comics I found to be extremely unlikable. Like, I wouldn't want to be friends with any of them. They, most of them seem to be jerks. These are nice miniatures, for sure. I mean, they, they gave me that Wait, uncommon that feel, actually. Thing? Like, you know, the little Crossmaster stuff? I'm getting the yeah. same kind of vibe... That of the they're painted, you know what I mean? The whole yeah, I like the plastic fact that they injection are, that they are. Uh, I believe they're going to be pre-painted. Yeah, it looks like um, it. What is this? Uh, I just throwable things. You can throw. You can they can throw them at each other. Throw those objects at each other. Yeah. Oh, um, not physically. Okay. Yeah. I just don't. I don't know. I just don't like the look of the game, and I have no interest at all in the actual series. So I yeah, have but obviously people this. do. This yeah, one of course, is, of course, it's going to do it's really making well. Making money, yeah, no, no, that's great. I just hope there's a game, good game, to back it up for those of you who are excited about yeah. it. Does it say who the designer is? Lucas Lee. <laughs> Dork. No, I don't know. You highlighted everything now, though. Yep. Erica. Isn't that uh, Daryl Andrews, the one who works at Arrow Dan? What's her last name? Erica Boyeris? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's the one that did a uh, Roar. Right. Pri pri I take it back. The game looks amazing. She did Roar. Roar. Yeah. She's one of the co-designers um, on that. One of the co-designers. So that's, that's She's cool. done a lot of uh, stuff. Maybe it's a yeah. fine game. I, the theme is what... She's a good designer. I'll be honest. The theme's turning me off on it. So maybe it's it's good beyond it's cool. that. Hey, right. but it's good to have a good, you know, a good designer's name attached to something like this because a lot of companies could go with the easy route of... There's not much of the game, Correct. but people will throw money at this because it's Scott Pilgrim. So, again, I'm glad they, they got somebody who, who knows what they're doing. Right. All right, Titans in a historical <laughs> fantasy miniature board game. My pick of the week. What? I'm so surprised. <laughs> My pick of the week. And I saw that Mike Slaybaugh has canceled his pledge for this game. Uh, what is TMB? Too much. No. Too many bones? And Cloudspire. Oh. Oh, okay. This is my personal opinion. You're and, crazy. Uh, I would have I would have canceled either one of those games, my pledges for those games, to keep this one. Oh, you like Valhalla. I do. That, oh, there's Vikings in this? That's oh, why a completely, are we even talking about no, this? No, no, no. Valhalla was a Viking game. This is something completely It's the same oh, company. Oh. I remember I was looking at it. Thinking about it, I'm like, I wonder what other game I remember looking at Valhalla. I was like, oh, Samuel. <laughs> this, game, Where? this game is, I've played Too Many Bones only once. Why are we talking about Too Many Bones? Because somebody canceled their pledge for this game in order to keep their pledge for Too Many Bones and Cloudspire. And they can do that? They can do that. Then leave them alone. You have absolutely <laughs> Oh, I like those canon right dudes. To do that. But all I'm saying is, this game is... A thousand more times, in my opinion, more fun than Too Many Bones. That's impossible. Well, it is. <laughs> you sound like Jason possible. now. It's a million it's times impossible. Yes, that's true. <laughs> it is. Come on. This is an amazingly well-produced game, and it is an amazingly well-designed game. Uh, to draw. I understand people have their own finances, man. Don't get me wrong. But I would seriously think about... <laughs> 
re-upping <laughs> and getting rid of one of those other two games. If uh, I'm just saying. I think this looks this fine. Became, it looks like, cool. Gaming advice with <laughs> Sam. Heaton. Um, I have a Woo! question for you, Sam. Where in this project are there Vikings? Right here. There Look at that. Not. Look at that. Kingdom there of Sweden. There we go. <laughs> They're sweet. That's the Kingdom of Sweden. They're not technically sure, Vikings. Sure, I got it. No, I just wanted to know where in your pick of the week were the Vikings. <laughs> I just need to know where. Um, is, it, is this like a contest between companies that are like, oh, you made a big miniature? Meanwhile, Eric Lang sits in the background going, oh, that's it. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, that's cute, right? <laughs> oh, you made a big miniature? Oh, that's how cute. big? Great. Yeah. Um, hold my Viking axe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we jump to Goat Dice, changing the way we roll. This is your pick of the week? I love dice, oh and these look awesome. Goodness. These, Sam, I told you these looked amazing. You should have watched the video, man. Okay. You're wrong, son. Now, look, you're snoring, but this is not a small amount of money being made here. I'm not the There's only not person who thinks this way. a small amount of money to how, get these dice how either. How much does one cost? That. Oh, it's like 25 bucks. One die. Show them. Show them what's 25 up. 25 bucks? Yeah, I don't care. I'm getting, Look I'm, at I'm that. getting some. Look um, at that. I'm sorry. That's. <gasps> okay, I know Z's mocking, but I'm I think. I'm not mocking. These are cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of mocking you a little bit, but. <laughs> No, look, I these look amazing. I'm look. sorry. Sam was like, oh, they'll evaporate. I'm like, you are insane and don't understand <laughs> chemistry. Sure. I said really right. nasty things. <laughs> you anyway, did. What do you guys... No, look, I like dice. I'm always looking for something different. I put a dice thing in every week, and it's usually like, this looks different. It looks it different. Is these different. look cool. It is definitely different. Ah, oh, these that. are neat. I'm sorry. That, that dye, that color combination, I'm digging it. Yeah. That one I don't like as much. The Tempest one? I like the yellow and pur the purple yeah, on yellow. Yeah, I think look. I like the yellow and purple one, too. They're very different colors. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I could see it. This is a cool-looking project. I hope they, they're manufactured well. I hope they roll well, and this the effect doesn't eventually stop working or something, coagulates in there or something, but it looks neat. The I more get you it. get, the cheaper get they it. get. Get a 1,000. A 1,000. What's the biggest number I can get? 20. Got it. I'm pledging right now. I'm just kidding. Oh, that's all. Oh, my whoa, word. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I kid. Here's my, what was almost my pick of the week, which is weird. My top two were also the most fun. This one, Chronicles of Drunagar Age of Darkness. But the only reason this one was almost my pick is because I've actually messed around with this one. It's sitting over there in the shelf. I've been looking at this one. Uh, this is the one I showed you with the 3D terrain. One of the cool things about this one I really like is that there's uh, the doors mm -hmm. between there. So you can see the, I don't know if they show farther down in here. Um, let me show you all the miniatures first because that's what these all do nowadays. Yeah, it's all about that first. Yeah, the door. When you get to a door, you open up the door and it shows you what's in the next room. I think that's really cool. Okay. Like the door itself. And what you can do is... When they have these scenarios, some of them will have multiple door number twos. Okay. So it's not the same room. So you don't know what's behind a door. I think that's kind of cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's neat. And the it has if if you like being able to upgrade your character in like eight hundred different ways, this game definitely has that. I don't. I know you I don't, don't either. But I really do. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff. My only negative one about this one was I felt like the whole thing was a little generic fantasy style. Every time I see one of these Kickstarters now with this like. It, this is exactly what I'm thinking of. All I can hear in my head is like the character from Gladiator screaming instead of, are you not entertained? Are you not overwhelmed? <laughs> are you not overwhelmed? Like, you know what I mean? This is almost designed to overwhelm you into opening your sure. wallet. Sure. Oh, to open your wallet. But I'll tell That's you what I'm saying. Like, this is a page that just goes... Oh, you, you, are you into gaming? Do you like miniatures? <laughs> and you're like, are you not overwhelmed? Throw but us money now. Oh, this that's game not enough pretty miniatures. Cool. Here's a dragon. This, game this one actually cool bleeds fire. Cube system here. So you have different cubes that are on the different actions you can take. And you use those you cubes. Can. And as you unlock different actions, you get more cubes of specific colors. So that you can take more of actions. those cubes, there is some sort of upgrade to make the miniatures, right? <laughs> I hope not. That's All disgusting. righty. Well, that is all the things that we have found. Let's jump to our contributors, and we'll be back. Hey, folks. Welcome back to the Dice Tower Preview Recap. I'm Mark, and today we have just a few games to take a look at. So let's jump in and get started. Our first game is Legacies. So 
you are one of the most famous people of the 19th century. However, pondering your mortality, you decide that your name needs to live on into the future. So you need to build a legacy. And in doing so, you're gonna build relationships. You're gonna manipulate the stock market. You're going to be acquiring heirlooms. But most importantly, you're going to be looking for a successor to carry on the family name. So Legacies is a heavier style game, Euro style, but the theme of this legacy idea really comes through as you build your empire and span it across the centuries or your legacy. You know, you're going to be investing, you're going to be doing all kinds of building relationships, you're going to be selling stock and of course buying stock, things like that to enhance your character. And some of the game end parameters can change based on the tiles that come up and flip. You have heirlooms and all kinds of ways to get points in this game. And of course, in the end, it's all about having the most victory points. And next up, we have Vengeance, the director's cut. So Vengeance is all about what it says. Vengeance, your character has been wronged by any number of gangs and you are out for blood, so to say. Think of movies like Kill Bill or even like John Wick in recent memory. So those movies really encapsulate what this game is about. However, this game may actually take that and ramp it up. But on Kickstarter is the Director's Cut, which is an expansion that adds a fair amount more of player interaction using director cards, as well as giving you more thugs or more gangs to deal with and a new player character. Now, the thing about Vengeance that I found very interesting was that, yes, it has that huge Kill Bill vibe to it, but, you know, it is a dice chucker and you're out for vengeance trying to wipe out the thugs in any of the dens. And uh, the thing that's cool is that not only is it a dice chucker, but these dice end up being like a puzzly aspect to the game as you figure out how best to utilize them in any of those attack situations. Now, the director's cut, which is the expansion, adds a few more cards to the game that allows you a little more interaction with the other players at the table. So these cards almost like make you the director of this action sequence in Kill Bill. And you can really change up how those battles go for other players. And we have Quick and the Undead. Welcome to the Old West and the sleepy little town of West Fort. West Fort was recently overrun though, overrun by the undead. Now it's up to you and your band of outlaws to ride into town and eliminate the zombie menace. However, you have to deal with the other outlaws at the table all vying for control of this little sleepy town. You're gonna be buying up resources. You're gonna be entering into duels. You're going to be acquiring buildings all in an effort to gain the most notoriety and be the ultimate outlaw heroes. Now, the interesting thing about Quick and the Undead is that it has that very highly spaghetti Western feel to it. And you are truly trying to rid this town of all the undead. It is a quick, fast paced action card game. And it just it really was just a ton of fun. And next up, we have Takedo Namiji. In this game, you play a fisherman of the Japan of yesteryear, sailing south, not far from the famous Takedo. In order to win the game, you will have to make your journey very fruitful by contemplating various marine life, by fishing with hook and net, and filling your racks with exotic fish. You will also be stopping at docks along the way in order to improve your fishing equipment, as well as making offerings to the deities. So if you're familiar with Takedo, a lot of this will be very familiar. However, it is a different game for sure. And again, you are after the most victory points. So yes, if you know Takedo, Namiji is going to seem very familiar. Same artwork, same feel. And you know, the fishing aspect of the game really is pretty neat. The line fishing and the net fishing, casting that out and creating the set collections of fish to get points. I actually thought that was pretty fun. Now. Does this feel like a replacement game? You know, it feels more like a sequel to me. And it uh, has that same kind of zen quality to it. It's just a relaxing, fun game. 
All right, so my pick of the week. This was actually really tough for me. All these games have an aspect about them, well, especially Legacies, really took me by surprise. I didn't really think I could enjoy a heavier Euro the way I did that one. And of course, Amigia's beautiful, beautiful game, just like Takedo. And Vengeance, oh my gosh, it feels like you're directing a movie. I mean, it is Kill Bill. But I'm giving it up for Quick and the Undead because Cowboys and Zombies, how fun is that theme? And it plays really fast, and I just really enjoyed that one. All right, folks, if any of the games that I mentioned here look like they might be of interest to you, please go check out our full previews. And if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you at the table. Sister Meeple here, bringing you my five most anticipated games launching in the last half of November. November 18th. It seems like there's a new bee-themed game every other week, but I'm not complaining. I love bees. In Apidaya, each player takes control of a unique bee species and chooses a unique hive location to build upon. They will play through three seasons acting as the queen bee to harvest nectar and pollen, explore the world, and build their hive. They can even do the special waggle bee dance. November 20th. Venice lets players take the role of wealthy, influential merchants as they ride their gondolas up and down the city's canals, train their assistants, complete contracts, and leverage their influence to gain political power. As they broker contracts and flirt with crime, merchants must avoid raising the suspicion of the Venetian Inquisition, because the person with the most suspicion at the end of the game cannot win no matter how many points they earned. November 21st. Reiner Knizia is one of my favorite game designers, so I am definitely interested in his latest game, Medici the Dice Game, based on his classic board game Medici. Medici the Dice Game is a dice selecting roll and write game where players will fill their ships with goods presented at the wharf. Can this game stand out among the myriad of dice game remakes out there? We'll have to wait and see. Also launching November 21st is Magnate the First City. Budding real estate tycoons should enjoy snapping up valuable land and constructing the right buildings in the right locations to attract high-value tenants. But while the players acquire more and larger properties, the price of land keeps rising higher and higher. Eventually, it becomes completely unsustainable, and a game-ending crash will destroy the value of players' properties. Players must time their actions carefully to avoid substantial losses. I like the looks of this one. November 26th. Museum is coming out with a collector's edition and expansion. You are the curator of a museum, and it's your job to build the biggest, most coherent collection that you can. This set collection game has gorgeous art from Vincent Dutre. That's all, folks. See you in another two weeks for my most anticipated games coming soon to Kickstarter. Hey, folks, and welcome to FOMO, the segment where I take a look at a game that's seeking crowdfunding right now. Maybe out of fear of missing out on it, maybe you do too, and we'll buzz around and figure it out together. With that said, buzzing, today we're going to take a look at Honey Buzz. So in Honey Buzz, players are one of Her Majesty's trusted bees. The players will be assigning workers to expand the hive and creating cells to store nectar that will become honey that can be sold at market or used to complete orders. The game plays one to four players, so those who love their solo games, this game has you covered already. On a player's turn, they'll either assign workers to the board or recall their workers. When assigning a worker, a bee is placed on a space on the board. If there are bees already there, then you have to place one more worker than the current highest number of stacked bees. So for that reason, be sure when you're placing your bees that you stack unless you're when you're placing more than one. After this, they must take the top tile from the area and place it in their hive, touching existing tiles, but it may only be touching on edges without white or dark borders. If placing this new hive tile completes an empty cell or cells surrounded by tiles, then all actions connected to the cells are activated in any order the player chooses. These actions include hatching new workers, bees, gaining money, foraging for nectar out in the fields, producing honey, market actions, or wildcard decrees allowing the player to choose the action they wish to take. If instead of placing a bee, the player chooses to retrieve their workers from the board, they collect all of their bees from the board, including any new hatched bees, and then they scout the field, taking a peek at a face-down tile of their choice. Now, the flowers in the field are arranged by type, but some flowers have been mixed in with what should be there. When a player activates foraging, they select a field that matches the pattern of the cell they are activating from, and look 
looks under one of the flowers of their choice. If they can use it within their hive, they take it and place it within an empty cell. If they're unable to place it, then instead take a pollen token. When producing honey, the player places their fan token on a space in their hive, and any nectar token connected to this produces a honey associated with the nectar. Honey and pollen may be sold at the market at the current price, but this also reduces the current selling price by one. It also instead could be used to complete orders that award victory points and a bonus action. The game continues until one of two conditions. Either four of the five resources at market have been reduced to their lowest value, or the orders in two of the three stacks have been depleted. Players continue the current round until all players have had equal turns and final scoring begins. Players receive one point each for each coin, pollen, and honey that they have, and they receive points for their completed orders, and then any ga end game contests are resolved. Note that some of those contests will resolve during the game. The player with the highest points is going to be the winner. All right, so that is an overview of Honey Buzz. Now, I first thing I'll say is they were kind enough to get that over to me. Now, this one actually got to me at the very last minute. Luckily, I had played this game previously. I actually played this game back when it was still mostly a black and white prototype with some pieces. And I really, really liked it. And I actually told them at that time, and this was I'm guessing about six, seven months ago at this point, I told them, when you bring this to Kickstarter, I want you to get me a copy. I want to cover this on FOMO. So immediately I had FOMO about FOMO for this game, which bodes quite well. What this game is, is another game about bees. Now there does seem to be a lot of games about bees lately, and bees aren't really something I have a super interest in, and I don't eat honey, so... Did I need a game about bees? Yes, yes I did, because I love this game. This is a worker placement game at its core, but it's a little more. You're, I really like the interesting choices. I'm building out my, my hive and I'm collect, connecting those tiles together. And I there's this satisfaction when sometimes I can connect multiple cells at one time to complete them and chain those actions. So while the game is very simple, I do one of two things on my turn. I place a bee or I collect all my bees. That's really all you do, but it's how those chain from there. I complete a cell. Maybe I get to do multiple actions throughout there. Maybe I get to produce honey, but I've, I've done it in such a way that I can produce on maybe three cells at once. And that feeling, you just constantly get this feeling of satisfaction turn to turn as you build your little engine in there. Now, one thing that I know a few people had issues with during the playtest, I didn't, was that whole memory aspect to the fields. Now, I personally really like the memory aspect. However, they did take that feedback and they did create a variant on it that has a zero memory version. It's not for me personally, but I think others will like it. The solo game is a play for score, but it is equally just as fun. I did like the little contests that go on both during the game and after the game. The orders seem well balanced. The market I liked a lot because I really do have to think about how I'm manipulating it, bringing it down because those only go down. They never go back up. And even when you scout, go out into the field of forage and you don't find what you're looking for, you take a pollen. You know what? Pollen's pretty good too, because pollen can be sold at market and collect enough of that, you're going to make a pretty penny. So overall, this is an absolute high mark FOMO game for me. If you're not backing it, why not? Because you should be, but at least go check out their Kickstarter page. It is still running as of the time of filming this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Honey Buzz, help you decide if this is a FOMO for you, and I look forward to seeing you folks next episode. Huh? We're back! All right. Huh? I'm confused. Yes. Well, so today... This is called Monday. I was opening up stuff from Essen and going through, and there was two games with the same title, and huh? so I assumed one was an expansion for the other, but it was not. It was just a smaller version of the bigger game or something like that. What? Really? Yeah, it's, but Were this is happening confused? more and more. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Tell us about it. <laughs> no. Am I the only person though who goes into Kickstarter sometimes and doesn't know how to pledge? Like I'm like, okay, I want the game, 
And then there's four different pledges, and there's the regular pledge. Okay, yeah. I get that. It's just yeah. the base game. Then there's this pledge, and I don't know which stretch goals go with which pledge. And then they'll call it the Dusaku pledge, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. The really interesting part is when this has happened to me, when they do game, you know, whatever pledge, and then these fancy dice you can add <laughs> to your pledge for like eight bucks. Okay, cool. And in a later stretch goal they hit, they're included. And so at that point you're like, okay, so wait. If I am still backing and I assume I can still give you the eight extra bucks, am I going to get duplicates? Do I then have to go in there and adjust my pledge? That's when I think it's really problematic. When they announce a thing, you can add it on, and later on they give you some of that anyway. Then you're starting to get messy. That's usually during the campaign stuff. I like also that run happens. into problems in the pledge manager. So I'm looking at it. I pledge. Okay, here's your, so here's your pledge. Great. And then here's a bunch of add-ons, which is literally every single possible thing. Yes. And then I'm like, well, there's these dice. Do I have them? I don't know. Yeah. This expansion, was that included? I don't know. Do I want this? I, I don't know. I, sometimes I find the whole thing confusing because I'm not sure what I pledged for, if I pledged for the right thing. That's why I'm a huge fan of the ones that have a single pledge. Sure. Give me the single pledge. You know, here's the game. They have, they have get the game. And then, and then in the backer kit, you can do all that crazy stuff. And I know I didn't get any of it. Sure. So I can decide to add the metal coins or not. I was talking to my dad about this a couple of weeks ago. He was looking at one of uh, another Kickstarter. And... He was asking me, how in the world do you guys know what you're getting when you pledge for a certain level because of everything you guys have been talking about? And this was kind of like an outsider looking in type perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're right. How in the world can somebody just coming into the hobby possibly have the ability to navigate everything and understand it off the off the right. No, it's the not all there's a lot of kickstarters I think that are fairly clear. <clears throat> sure, I get that, but, but I there's mean, a lot that are I'm com I'm confused. Right. I think the more confusing part for me, I'm trying to put myself in those shoes, would be I go to a Kickstarter page, I'm like, okay, so I back this thing, I give them extra money, okay, if I want extra stuff, got it. But I wouldn't even be aware of the whole backer kit culture. If I was, if you were new, once you do that's it, now what I mean, it's expected. But I'd be though. like, oh, I better do this now, or I miss out, right? And then I'd get the backer kit thing. I'm like, oh, I can add this stuff now too. Oh, okay. I would just feel kind of like scared into backing. I'd feel a little betrayed, to be honest, if I wasn't aware of the culture. Hmm. I feel like, back it now. You want extra dice? You better jump on some extra dice. Woo! And then I'd get the backer <laughs> kit. And be like, oh, I can add all this stuff anyway. I can get multiples if I want to. I think I would feel a little misled. And I wonder if there's a little preying on people when it comes to that, you know. Oh, dude, I think, I think Kickstarter preys on people anyway. Yeah. I mean, because it's all about, hey, you better get it now or you're not going to be able to get it. Sure, sure. There's a I lot mean, of that. That's predatory. I don't I don't yeah. care how you look at it. You, you're preying upon people's fear of not being able to get something. And we know it's a you are yes preying on people's fear for something they don't need. We know that. You know, sure, you're not sure. this isn't that malicious cuz at the end of the day this is, you know, toys. But um it's still a weird thing and I and I get it. They need the money to fund, you know. So the backer kit thing, not being front and center, and, and particularly made a big deal. Like you, you can get extra stuff later. Don't worry. You know, they don't necessarily want to point that out either. They want more money up front. So, what's going on? Who's uh, ringing no. that bell? All uh, right. No, but another thing is, and someone mentioned this here. They said I dislike when they split expansions between pledges. But you can add them later. Like sometimes I'll mm -hmm, go in there, mm -hmm. and this happens a lot. So there's an expansion for a game, mm -hmm. and they're like, you can get the expansion. Also, you can get the base game with the expansion. Yes, that that oh. just that just blows my mind. I'm sorry to cut in here, but that's not an expansion to me. You have the core game. You shouldn't. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just old fashioned. An expansion comes after you've played the core game. And you know you like the core game, and you want something new. Well, sure, but I'm you don't add an expansion to something that you've not played yet. Yeah, but sometimes someone wants the core game, and the expansion's a way for the core game to be kickstarted again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then I go sure. in there, but I get confused because, like, we saw one even today when we were going through where there's two expansions for uh, Montana, right? Right. Do you want one, two, both? 
And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know because I've not played the game yet. Yeah, well, I mean, I want an expansion for the game, maybe. Well, I'm saying if I had played the game. Yeah. But then, and Queen really can, it's confusing sometimes. Okay. You can also back this and get one of our older games. And then this pledge has this and a different game. And I'm like, oh, wait, which ones am I pledging for again? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just find the whole thing sometimes awfully confusing. Yeah, you prefer when, the, when they're a little bit simpler on the simpler side when it comes to all that stuff. I don't, I got to be careful because... We do this in our own Kickstarter. We, do. we, we do. have a whole pile of things. I don't mind mounds of things to add on. Sure. Just, do you want this, 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 this? Great, I'll add them on. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when stuff starts crossing, that's where I get confused. Okay. So Pledge A has lot one, two, and three. Pledge B has lot one, two, three, and four. Pledge C has two, three, and four. Oh, well, wait a minute, what? You know, now right. that right. that's where I get confused. Yeah. And I also sometimes am not sure if the pledge I backed has the metal coins in, so, do, am I buying something I don't need? Because it doesn't tell you that when you click on it. It's like, you already have metal coins. Are you sure you want to order another set? Mm -hmm. right. You already have the play mat included with your pledge. I don't and know. That's, and that's where my main point of confusion comes from. Some Kickstarters, when they launch, those coins are cardboard. And they are coins that are metal coins that you can add on. But if they do very well, sometimes they, in an update... And in the graphical update, too, I get it. They throw in the metal coins. You can still buy them, but they throw in metal coins. Now it gets a little messy for me. Yeah. Because that means I need to stay on top of this. Because I might be getting duplicates of stuff that I wasn't planning on. So that's my main issue there. And I get it. Oh, hey, you're giving us more stuff. That's cool. So the Star Kickstarter was confusing. Well, we'll try to make it more simple. We learn Simpler. every year. We learn every year, right? We learn. Yeah, and one of the things so does I everybody think, else too is running yeah. Kickstarters. Of course, we. Yeah, know. I'm not. Again, this is I'm just maybe again. It's just me sometimes, but and a lot of it sometimes is because I forget what I backed. So then, it's like Pledge Manager, sometimes the Pledge Manager is quite a bit later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after the oh, sure, the projects sure. end it, and I'm like, which pledge did I do again? Did I do this deluxe? Yeah, I don't remember if I wanted deluxe of this one or not. So then I have to look, see the money. Was shipping included? Was it not included? You have to figure out what the money you intended it to go towards, right? Especially if I did an add-on. If I'm like, oh, this was 80. I, I gave him 80 bucks. The game's 40. <laughs> what was all this other stuff for? So I got to go through the page again and be like, add-ons. Okay, this is 15 bucks. That brings me up to 65. And then these dice are 8. Okay. But then, like, there's nothing else that would be the rest of that money. <laughs> Well, was I getting the dice twice? And you're like, that's when it gets messy. I've definitely yeah. done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did I intend to do here? All righty. Well, we're going to get going here because it is 2.06, and we got more videos. We got some videos that just were posted today mm -hmm. um, so that they just come out, and we have more coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, live board game breakfast and our top 10 games every gamer should, should own. own. But you're not a real gamer. Whoa. That's not, that's not what we're calling it. That's oh, what, that's we're not putting that tagline in. <laughs> that's what he means. That's a joke. <laughs> um, but uh, it's gamers. Uh, it's, it's games that are a little more advanced than uh, the lighter family stuff, right? No, I'm saying thing. if you're a gamer, you should own these games. Yeah. And I'm saying if you'd like a brain melty melt, you should get these games a la mode. I don't know. Some of mine are simple games, but you should have them. Game with a dollop of ice cream on it. Yeah, baby. I do like ice cream. Mm. Come back for that. Let's get some pie. Alrighty. Thanks to our contributors, to Sister Meeple, Robert, and the guy who walks all over the place. With that snake <laughs> in the back. You saw it. The walking dead. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. I am Z Garcia. I'm Sam Healy. Thanks for joining us. See you on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.